I jokingly say this was my test for my nursing home admission and that I was coloring with my grandson and I thought, wow, maybe in a couple of years I might have to grade myself and or have somebody grade me and see how well I can color a uh, picture when I'm in the nursing home. But uh, not ready to go there yet, but uh, just a little something to start off with. So uh, welcome to everybody again. The, the topic of this is 20 minutes, get to the point. The, 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 the issue is today, and every one of us, probably every one of us on this webinar, as well as our students, are ADD. They have attention deficit disorder. They have a hard time paying attention for a very long period of time. So that's how, we, how I came up with this topic, is how do we start breaking things down? What is it we have to do? What do we need to recognize in order to make sure that our students maximize their training opportunity? A little bit of background on myself. I've been in the fire service for 47 years, served as a fire chief for 35 years. I've been an instructor since about 1976 in the state of Indiana, where I come from. I am currently the state fire training director here uh, within the state fire marshal's office. I joined the International Society of Fire Service Instructors back in the 1970s. Uh, I used to write for The Voice way back when we had a paper, uh, monthly paper magazine, and uh, started presenting at FDIC 30 years ago. And uh, so I did it for 30, I presented at FDIC for 30 consecutive years. So, uh, but just like you, just like every one of you, we struggle with maintaining relevancy and maintaining currency in our delivery methods. So that's what we're going to talk about for a short period of time today here. So there's my email address in the event that you'd like to contact me. Yes. Yes. Lacey, can you? All right. All right. Well, let me back up here then. You didn't get to see my cartoon then, huh? How about now? All right. Well, there's my little joke about the nursing home uh, and my ability to color. So <clears throat> that's the first slide. There's the second slide of my email address. In the event you want to contact me via email at the end of this, by the electronic device that we carry on our hip or in our pocket called the smartphone. We want to see what's going on. We want to see what our friends are doing. You know, we use Facebook, Snapchat, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, all these social media things to stay connected with the world. But what I want as an instructor, these students spend time with you. What is it that you want from them? And I will tell you, in order to do a good, effective 20-minute presentation, you have to organize your major points in a, in a, on a single piece of paper. I didn't say a single piece of a single PowerPoint slide, but on a single piece of paper. Because if not, we, we can all talk forever. Many, many of our instructors, we're really good at just droning on and on and on and on and telling stories and getting off topic and, and, let, and we become distracted, the students become distracted. And so the next thing you know, we've been on, on the air for on the, uh, or behind the podium for an hour and a half. What was the outcome other than an hour and a half has passed us? So one of the things that you, first thing you got to do if you're going to get into a 20-minute presentation is you got to organize your presentation. You got to begin with the end of mind and say, what are, what are we going to do after 20 minutes? What is, what's the outcome going to be? And, and get that organized and have a very strong and clear a thesis of what that 20-minute presentation is about and, have, and limit the major points that you're going to talk about in those 20 minutes to no more than three. And in many cases, you can limit it to one, and in most cases, you can limit it to two. But, but you don't want to be talking about a whole lot of things in that 20 minutes. Now, I did not say that you're only going to do a 20-minute presentation you're going to send them home for the day. My point is that you do a 20-minute presentation, and you have to change it up. you got to do something to make things a little bit different. You either change your tone of voice, you change your mechanism of delivery, you change the way you're, you're presenting your class. Or you change the background on a PowerPoint slide if you're using that just to give them something different to look at to, to increase or re-energize their attention to what it is that you were saying. Realize that you will know more I, uh, about the stuff. Saw your text. 20 I'm minutes. About to start a webinar. I thought I just touched. I think somebody who has unmuted their microphone. But um, you're going to know more. Then about the subject, then you can talk about it in a 20 minute period. That's why you have to write it down and get organized, because if not, you're not going to meet your objectives and the students are not going to meet their objectives. So I encourage every 
fire instructor and firefighter to read something outside the fire service, especially those who want to be an officer or are currently officers, read books that are not fire service related. Uh, there, here's three good books on the, on the cover here. Uh, the John Maxwell, Everyone Communicates, but Very Few Connect, is an excellent book about what it is that we're trying to do as instructors and how we are trying to connect with the students so they pay attention and, have, and they produce a result as having paid attention to us for a short period of time. So these are just three books I would highly recommend that you look at, uh, that you read, study, uh, markups, tear up, and use in some of your presentations. The thing about a 20-minute presentation, just like this webinar is, we want to craft, design, and deliver a presentation that they will remember. And in every presentation, you want them to remember something. You're going to hear me talk about uh, coming up with, uh, with little tidbits, little, little motivational sayings that they can remember. I think that's going to be important because they're, they're not going to be able to remember every word that you say, but that you're going to have to give the key points that it is that you want them to remember. And even though I've done this presentation several times, I have notes that I'm still looking at to make sure that I cover the things that are key on every slide. So the other thing about instructors is we use the PowerPoint as our note guide. And that PowerPoint is not our note guide. Our PowerPoint is our visual stimulation that we use to stimulate the student's thought process, listening process, uh, um, so, that they, so that they will learn better. So when we look at that, I'm stealing this from the fitness industry. But if you take a high-intensity interval training and you convert that concept into a training program. And, you know, you can look at CrossFit training and say, you know, and I'm not a CrossFit trainer, trainee or into training, but you look at what they do and, and how they push themselves to the limits over short periods of time. That's what we're talking about here. I recently developed a three 20 minute uh, segments for a fire department. We did one hour. I told the, the training guy asked me to come and do a seminar. I said, you tell your students that they're to give me one hour. That's all I want. I don't want anything, but I said, they better show up on time and they better be prepared to go to work. And when we're done, they can go home and take a shower because we're going to be fast paced. We're going to have some feedback. We're going to make sure there's an evaluation part to this hour presentation but it's going to be quick. It's not going to be lazy or lackadaisical. So that's, again, a part of the concept is you're looking at maybe the, the fit, uh, you know, funk, firefighter functional fitness training, this book, uh, some of the things they do here, or even the, the CrossFit training concept. Again, it's part of this 20-minute educational concept. What happens to many of us, we get in a rut. Instruction becomes routine. It's not something that we, you know, we take seriously. For that one-hour training session I recently developed for that fire department, I spent close to four hours in the development phase of that because it was highly structured. And for the first time in my life, I had my alarm clock said, set for every 20 minutes. Why did I do that? Because it kept me on track. And I knew that I had to not necessarily watch the clock, but I had to be prepared at 20 minutes to cut it off and move on to the next topic because if not... I could spend a whole hour on some of these topics. But the point was there's an objective to each one of the 20-minute uh, presentations or the 20-minute blocks of time, and you know we had to meet that, that time frame. So when you look at our, our casual attitude about training, we say, well, you know, I'll come and do a, a forced wintry class, and you know, I'll spend two hours in the classroom and an hour on the drill ground so I can spend three hours. It's not about hours. It's about outcome. It's about what is the student going to get and what is they're going to be able to do in that short period of time? And maybe in the shortest period of time. So we, we don't need that laissez-faire attitude about instruction. We need to realize that everybody's time is valuable. We are limited to 24 hours in a day. Nobody has any more and nobody has any less. And when you look at career firefighters on shift for 24 hours, I'm not saying that they're busy all the time, but they're busy. They have things to do. And we should not waste their time, just like in the volunteer world, we should not waste their time. I believe that is the biggest insult that we can do to each other, and that is to waste our time. I'm busy, just like many of you on this webinar today. You're busy or you wouldn't be here. But something piqued your interest, something increased your curiosity, Once you to come and spend maybe an hour with us today to talk about this particular subject. 
But, but understand, it's not about the time you spend. It's about the outcome. It's about what is it they can do. So don't use time as an excuse to waste time. When you look at the, this term, edutainment, you may have heard this term before, but maybe you haven't. I, I learned this term or, you know, 10 years ago. It's about molding education within entertainment. And you might say, well, I'm an instructor. This is serious business. I'm not into entertainment. You want the students to pay attention? You're going to have to tell a couple of jokes. You're going to have to tell a couple of war stories. But you can't have those two things dominate your presentation. You've got to have good, solid content delivered in a professional manner, along with a little bit of entertainment, maybe a video, some kind of something that, that, that piques their interest, that makes them laugh, that makes the training enjoyable. I realize training is hard work, but it should be enjoyable. It should be fun. It should be outcome based. So again, you'll hear me, you'll hear me say that a lot. For the last 11 years, I have heard the word outcome more than I heard in my previous 35 years in this business because the governors that are my bosses, when you would meet with them, that's the first thing they ask you. What's the outcome? What, what, what are we doing that makes a difference? And the first time I was asked this, I couldn't answer that question very well. So, but I learned that he was going to ask that question almost every time we met. So you got to look at outcomes. Outcomes, what's the consequence of the, the, the training, the time that they spent? What's the final product? What's the end result that we're going to get? And then how do we teach our students to logically think? I'm not, I'm not sure that we do that very well. When I look at the, the methods that we do to train people, I know Rich Gassaway has created a program on, you know, we're training to kill. Uh, I got a poster I made up. Are you training for skill? Are you training to kill? When you look at how do we train people, are we training people to think? Are we training people just to do things in, in root order? But what happens if they get to step five and all of a sudden step five doesn't work? Do they know how to adapt and overcome? So even in this 20-minute block of time, you, can, you have to include the logical thinking part, the decision-making process. So when something doesn't go right, what are they going to do? What's the consequence of failing to know how to adapt and overcome in a training program? Things have changed. The, the delivery model has to change. Our students have to change as well. I'm not saying the instructors are going to do all the changing, but students today learn differently. My three-year-old granddaughter is a visual learner. She's probably used an iPad for a year, probably starting at age two. She watches Disney movies. She plays games on it. And think about when you have an 18 or 22 or 24-year-old student in your class. They learn visually. Yes, we are, we are hands hands on learning kind of process, but they learn visually. And PowerPoints, although they're called visual aids today, they are the most abused visual aid that we have. They are a crutch. Instructors use the excuse, "Thank God the bulb and the projector works," because now we can do training. That's not why we do training. We do training because we have a message to deliver, and what I. I'm saying is we got to deliver today in 20-minute chunks. Students have to become accountable for their performance. And you have to make students understand you are not going to teach them the answer to every question. They have a responsibility to study. They have a responsibility to show up for class prepared to learn. That's, that's one big change here because they in high school, in grade school, let's just say high school, in high school, most high school teachers would tell you it's easier for me to give that student a D than it is to give them an F. Because if I give them an F, it's the teacher's fault. If I give them a D, they move on to the next teacher and it's now someone else's problem. So now you have that student who expects to get by on a D. Can we allow firefighters to, to get by on a D? 100% right, 100% of the time is what we have to have. If not, somebody's life is in jeopardy, yours, mine, and the citizens. We cannot accept imperfection. And even in a 20-minute block, they have to be able to do it correctly, 100% right, 100% of the time. Perfect practice makes perfect. You may have heard the statement, practice makes perfect. No, perfect practice makes perfect. 
That's the secret. We're not trying to deprive the students of time needed for high quality instruction. I'm just saying we break it down into smaller chunks so they learn in smaller chunks. The Firefighter 1 2 books that we have today, the students are required to study, to learn in, learn from, uh, study in, are huge. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages. One weighs over 11 pounds. And we expect them to learn all that stuff. Well, they can't learn it at, you know, at, at 11 pound chunk. They have to learn in smaller chunks. So we have to make sure that we put our students' interests first. As instructors, that's the number one priority. Their students' interest and their ability to learn the material is important. So, you know, the theory of 20 minutes, I didn't create this. This is not new. I mean, there's a whole uh, high, high brow, high, very smart, intelligent people who created a program called TED Talks. Uh, TEDtalks.com. If you've not seen that, I encourage you to go look at that. There are people who do 18 minute presentations that are full of great ideas, good information, stimulating thought processes, uh, stimulating action, all in 18 minutes and very few PowerPoint slides. So the, the research shows that breaking this down into chunks works. It creates a deeper learning and a higher achievement ratio. It creates better recall by the students. And, and it develops, you know, a more, uh, if, if, it's, if, it's if the 20 minute blocks are delivered where you need logical thinking or reasoning, you have a higher order of reasoning skills as an outcome of doing things in smaller chunks. And in, in a big component of this is students enjoy it. It's a little, it's more fun to learn in smaller chunks because they've had you know, all their schooling is learned in, in big chunks. And those of us that, you know, spend time in college, you know, you had to learn hundreds and hundreds of pages of stuff to, to graduate, to, to get, to move forward, to get your degree. Today, they still have to do that, but it's so much harder for these students. So this is about active learning. This is not about students just sitting on their butt, waiting for you to spoon feed everything in through their eyes and their ears and hopefully their brain will absorb it. They have to be actively engaged in the learning. They have to be asked questions. You know, there's the, the lecture method that many of us were taught as the primary method to deliver training back in our in the old days, or 10, 20 years ago, is not the way to do it today. Our students are smarter. They have more opportunities to look stuff up. You've probably had classes to where, uh, you know, you make a statement and then somebody is, um, is looking it up on Google because they got their phone in their hand and you're, you know, they're checking you out and seeing if what you have said is true. So when you look at this thing, it's, it's, you know, it's going to, it's going to, that active learning process, you may allow the students to actually teach themselves a little bit and interact with each other. It's called peer learning. So they each, they, they each one of them can teach each other something. So again, another, just another, this has been proven by research. Again, not just by a couple of firefighters in the garage deciding that this was important. Don't forget these four steps. These are the four steps that every one of us were taught in instruction, preparation, presentation, application, review or evaluation. It's right in the IFSTA book. It's right in the instructor books, you know, about how, to, how are we supposed to deliver? Well, you do the same thing in a 20 minute block. You, you just don't do a 20 minute lecture without any application. I mean, if you're teaching a theory, there's some kind of application of that. And then there has to be an evaluation, even in that 20 minute block. That's how we keep students involved in the active learning process. And it's important that we, you know, in the presentation, in the you know, preparation phase, we make sure that we are prepared adequately. We should come prepared 100% so that we can deliver the program that we plan to deliver. Now, one of my staff members, we were doing an instructor in service and at first she was doing it and, and I was gonna go for the first time and, and I said, so where's the PowerPoint? She said, there won't be any PowerPoints. And I said, what? what do you mean there won't be any PowerPoints? She goes, they have to listen to you. They have to focus on your words. They have to listen to what it is you're saying. Versus looking at the PowerPoint and being distracted. That's a pretty interesting concept. And we today still do many of our instructor in-services that way. And they are very well reviewed. And we get uh, good comments on them. And the students seem to learn more. Now, we do give a handout. So they do have something to take 
way. So we do have some kind of outline of what we're going to cover, but we're not putting it up on the screen. And actually, we have developed a company officer development program that is 40 hours in length and uses no PowerPoint slides, not a one. It's using the adult learning concept. There's exercises, there's games, there's facilitated discussion, there's peer teaching, there's homework assignment. The adult learning concept, or the adult learning theory is not about lecture all the time, as many of us have been led to believe, and that's how we have practiced our, our, our uh, craft. So when you look at breaking down into a 20-minute segment, here's the things you got to do. Organize, rehearse, clear objectives, practice before a mirror, and summary. Practice before a mirror, you say? Yes. And when's the last time you videotaped one of your presentations? Not the audience, of you. Do you still have the good educational delivery techniques that are part of a high quality instructor? I don't know. I challenge you to go do that. I can tell you when I did that a couple years ago, I found out that I don't know what to do with my hands. My hands move, they're, they're a distraction, and sometimes I look pretty weird with what I do with my hands. So I had to adapt. But I, you know, again, part of that 20 minutes is have it laid out on a piece of paper. If you have PowerPoints, that's okay. But have it laid out on a piece of paper with your notes or what it is you want to talk about specifically on that PowerPoint slide. Rehearse it. Make sure you have clear objectives, clear outcomes. Practice it before a mirror and make sure that you're able to summarize in that 20-minute block. When you look at discernment, maybe a term that you may be familiar with, may not be. Again, one of my bosses uh, turned me on to this term. This is the ability to reason. This is the ability to think. This is the ability to make judgment based upon your training, based upon your education. And in, in this case, discernment is a psychological uh, in nature. It's, it's a thought process that you're able to actually examine something and, and, and dig deep into it. And an, ex an example is test questions. When you develop a test question, are you able to discern and actually create the answer that is obvious from the book and then the, the distractor that's not quite as obvious as it could be, but then the other two questions is like they're major distractors and they, they really are probably not even close to the answer. But the discernment is about where someone is considered to possess wisdom, have good judgment, and especially in the subject matter that they are, they are, their craft is in. So as firefighters, we have a, a huge amount of subject matter. We have so many things that we have to learn about and be good at. How can we be good at all of them unless we can logically think through some of the problems? And that's called discernment. Stop counting the number of slides in your presentation. Dear God, there is a curriculum that is provided by one of the, one of the manufacturers. It's 1,100 slides for a 40-hour program. Now, how much learning do you think takes place if you go through 1,100 slides? I sit in a six-hour program one time on building construction, and this guy was so proud. In the first five minutes, he said, I have 400 slides to cover today on building construction. I about got sick. 400 slides in six hours, and now we got to have breaks? So calculate that up. We'd have been better off walking around somebody's downtown and teaching building construction that way. It's like teaching ladders on a PowerPoint slide. Take them out to the, to the training ground or take them out to the side of the apparatus and let them touch, feel, and see a ladder. Don't put a PowerPoint slide up to teach ladders. So quit counting the number of slides in your presentation. Storyboard the content. Again, you know, have the, the storyboard laid out. That's what a PowerPoint is about. A PowerPoint is, a, is, is an advanced level of storyboarding. But we just think the more, the more PowerPoint slides that we create, the better our program is going to be. And I'm here to tell you, the less PowerPoint slides we have, in many cases, are better for the learning process to take place. In a 20-minute program, you want, to, you want to have one and only one concept uh, that you're going to talk about. You're going to, and, and remove extraneous information. Stick to the point. Get down to the nitty-gritty and make sure they're able to understand what it is that you're talking about in that 20-minute block. And then change your pace every 20 minutes. 
you know, when you look at, you know, this guy, this guy named uh, Rich Redmond's is, a, you know, does a course on Christ survival. It's about leadership. And he talks, you know, in his presentation, he plays the drum for a little bit. And he gets up and talks. He plays the drum for a little bit and gets up and talks. A very dynamic presentation. And you're paying attention. Because when he's up there talking, you're listening to what he has to say. Because you know what the company is? He's going to go back and play the drums. And you're going to listen to that. So you're constantly listening, but he's changing the pace. And the same thing here after, when you want to do it, do an hour presentation. My point is change the pace. You know, do a movie, do some kind of entertainment, do a game, do a skit, do an exercise, do role playing, do some kind of open discussion to change the pace. Because just going, droning off. On and on and on with the same uh, tone, the same PowerPoints is not create, creating a good learning environment. Don't force an audience to sit passively. Oh, my God. Again, we're talking to adults. They have some basic understanding, basic knowledge when they came into that room. Draw it out of them. Make them talk to you. Make them talk to each other. Ask them to get up and, and talk about something. I have some cards. If you if you if you would email me, uh, uh, I call back pocket drills. Uh, they're they're so when you showed up and it's snowing or it's raining or you can't go do training, you're you lost access to the facility that you were going to use. You pull this card out of your back pocket and you you like one of them is is a bunch of uh, modern fire behavior terms and you give this to each of the students. You say I'm going to give you ten minutes to research this. You're going to come back and you're going to talk about the definition of this particular term. They are teaching the topic. You're not. You're the one that had the words, had the, the, the words that you're going to use in them to teach. Back pocket drill also uses where you have downtime. You have to do practical skills. You got 12 firefighters doing training, but only four are busy. Here's some other ideas that you can do uh, that you can have done in SCBA. Hook their face piece regulator up to their face repetitively to make sure they're really, really good at that. Because it's like a RIT team. I have a RIT team drill. I want you to get ready, stand up like you're a RIT team, and I'm going to declare a May Day. I want to know how long it's going to take you to get to the door. Because many of our people who are standing by in RIT do not have their face piece on, maybe don't have their hood up, definitely don't have their helmet on in many cases, and they definitely don't have their gloves in, on and they're not on air. How long is it going to take? I am dying. I've just declared a May Day. How long is it going to take you to get to the front door? I didn't say get in the front door. How's it going to take you to get to the front door? A minute? I'm dying. I don't have a minute. So, so when you look at, you get your audiences engaged. Look, how do you engage them? Don't, don't have them sit passively. Summarize your presentation at the end. Three important points how what it is that you want to talk about how it is you want to what what it is that you want them to learn and what them what the outcome make sure that it is this is about outcome keep focus on achieving a positive end result at the end of 20 minutes what's the positive end result make sure that our that our messages are clear pertinent and uh, 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 applicable to the students make sure you know, the material that you're teaching is is interesting and applicable to the students and that it's easily digestible. You know, our, many of our students are not operating at the college level. We have to make sure that we take our training, our teaching methods, our teaching techniques down to their level. Not necessarily below their level, but if, if we can talk college level, but if they don't understand it, then we have failed as instructors. So we got to make sure that our message is clear, pertinent, and, and to their needs, and is digestible. One of the things that a 20-minute block of time does, a 20-minute presentation does, it makes you get to the point. You've got to be clear and focused messages in that 20 minutes. You've got to stay on topic, not divert, not allow yourself to be distracted. Yes, you can take questions from the students, but you've you got to answer that question and not let the student question, again, distract you from what it is that you're supposed to, uh, to, to be delivering in that short period of time. I know I, I sort of talked down list a minute ago, but, but I would – tell you that again the research tells us students learn from lists today they learn with lists you can look at hundreds and hundreds of, of electrons on a page you can look at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of electrons in a chapter in a book but they learn by list they learn by bulletized point so again i encourage you to have a bulletized list 
to summarize your, your, the learning that you expect them to come out of in, in a list kind of format. Si sound bites. I mentioned this earlier. These are a couple sound bites. I was sitting in a presentation last week at the Firehouse Expo in Nashville, Tennessee, which if you haven't been there, I'd encourage you to, to attend. It's very well uh, put together in a very organized presentation, uh, pro or many presentations. But, but I was sitting in, in, in a presentation, and, and this is the sound that I got. And I went up to the guys after and said, okay, here's, here's what I got now. If you put the fire out, everything gets better. Okay, that's nothing new. We've heard that from other people. But the second one is the level of mental aggression impacts the firefighter's risk profile. Chief John Lewis out of uh, New Jersey. And what he was talking about, he's not talking about aggressive firefighters. He's talking about our mental aggressiveness, the way we think that we haven't had a fire in three months or three weeks, or three years. And so we are mentally aggressive to go get that fire. We have got to conquer the devil. And his statement was that impacts the firefighter's risk profile. And so again, you look at, so that's one of the things I learned from his hour and a half, or remembered from his hour and a half presentation. So it's, you know, doing a 20 minute presentation, we go, oh, that's pretty easy. I can talk for 20 minutes. No, the key word there, effective winning presentation, effective and winning, something that they are going to remember about you and about your presentation takes work, takes practice. And it, as I said, just takes practice. You don't get to be good at something by doing it one time. You don't get to be good at something by delivering it one time. You don't get to be good at donning an SCBA by doing it one time. You don't get to be a good at, at pulling pre-connect by doing it one time. So just like you don't be, you're not good at doing a presentation, you might say, oh, well, yeah, I'm good at presenting, not the presentation. Yes, you're a good presenter. You have a good stage presence, but you may not be good at presenting this particular topic because you haven't presented it enough times. So again, we talked about, mentioned earlier about learn. students have different learning styles. Uh, they learn from a variety of ways. They learn from auditory, they learn from smell, you know, all those senses that are out there, they learn. We have to realize that they learn, in our, in our world, they learn best with a hands-on approach because we expect them to take the theory and apply it on the street. Most everything we teach in theory is, is applied out on the street. It's, it's, it's learned in the classroom, learned on the drill ground, and it's applied in the street. So we have to understand that our students are hands-on people. All students are not created equally. So, you know, it's like anything somebody said, well, you do it this way, and it would be great. Well, I will tell you that even with this theory, 80% of the students will get it in a 20-minute block, but there's going to be that 20% that are not. So all students are, are, don't learn the same. They learn a little bit differently. So you got to realize that. But we learn visually, auditorily, uh, verbally, physically, logically, and we learn socially. We learn socially just by being together. Firefighters, we are very social, uh, camaraderie-prone uh, people. We usually like each other. We like have a good time. And so we learn from that social interaction. So it's not all about sitting in a classroom. We can learn a lot during breaks. So again, don't don't waste that time during breaks to uh, to not take that opportunity to, to learn from. So hopefully, what I have got across to you in this short presentation is that you know you you as an instructor have to adapt. The students are going to have to do some adapting, but if the instructor doesn't adapt, the student's not going to adapt. I encourage you to try it. I encourage you to be creative. Think back to when you first became a instructor. You were creative. You had to do your own overhead transparencies or create your own slides or you use a blackboard or a whiteboard. Be creative. The students want you to be innovative. They want creativity from their instructor. They want enthusiasm. They want excitement. They want to be led. They want to be taught. They're hungry for information. It's up to you as the instructor to deliver that message and it's up to the student to be willing to soak it up. So there's two parts of that process. But and it takes both of us to be successful. And with that, Jamie, I will uh, come back to you for any uh, closing comments. I thank everybody for attending. I hope that uh, this uh, 34 minutes uh, is, was worth your time, that uh, you got some good information. And maybe you, uh, if you have any questions of me, there's again my email address. I uh, would be glad to uh, try to answer any questions that you might have. Jamie, anything for you?
Thank you all very much. Have a great day.